ये क्या हो गया साउंड इज गॉन हाउ माई फैन बंद कर दिया मेरा ये बीच में क्या आ गया ये Good afternoon, all of you. I am Meer Kumar Singha, Chairperson of Future Leader Forum. On behalf of CEAI, welcome you all for today's webinar, Bulk Bulk Material Handling with Special Reference to Ports, by our eminent speaker, Mr. Prabhupad Kumar Datta. Before going to the presentations, I would like to say something about the CEAI. Consulting Engineering Association of India (CEAI) is an apex body of consulting engineering fraternity. in india the membership includes small medium and large engineering consultancy organizations both in private and public sector and establish individual practicing consulting engineers in addition epc organizations are also included in the membership being involved in planning design and engineering project and construction management as well cei is the members member association from india representing the indian Engineering consultancy professions at the International Federation of Consulting Engineers (FEDI) on the Global Forum. CEAI received a prestigious award for FEDI Member Association Excellence at the recently concluded Global Infrastructure Conference held in Singapore. Heartiest congratulations to CEAI on behalf of Future Leader Forum. Future Leader Forum is one of the committee of CEAI. which was formed in 2012 with the intention of providing young professional with an opportunity to participate in cei pd can other asia pacific program and interact with their peers and help them to develop the next generations of leaders future leader forum were interested to deliver webinar on various topic covering all fields of engineering this will give an opportunity to learn from each other and provide better field understanding to upcoming and practicing engineers now i would like to request mr uh, rs sharma sir to say something about uh, ci activities he is a civil engineer by qualifications and over the span of more than more than 50 years of experience and a distinguished career he has been member of governing council of cei for over the 12 years and served as a treasurer of 8 years now he is a president of cei during the period he has served the various committee and organized seminars he is a life member of cei and one of the pillar of the associations he is outstanding contributions to he the higher the slide in the slide uh, he his outstanding contribution to the highway sector he has been honored with the lifetime achievements award by the indian road congress for the year 2022 he commands considerable respect in the government consultancy and contracting industry in india now please welcome mr rs sharma president of cei uh thank you mihir for a nice introduction and uh, you have covered a part of it what i wanted to say about cia so i'll just uh, supplement uh, on whatever mr meer has said first of all i'll like to welcome on behalf of cia and myself shri praveer kumar datta a very renowned expert uh, having over 54 years of experience 
uh, in this uh, ports, ports handling, and uh, he has worked on so many companies. You know, if you he will be introduced uh, by uh, later on, so I'll not uh, do it here so that to avoid duplicacy. Uh, and you will see uh, during his uh, talk, uh, we were just uh, chit chatting. He says. Uh, 50 years experience, you want me to cover in 50 minutes, okay? <laughs> so, it's a hard time. <laughs> so, but anyway, we have, to, we have to do like that. You have to select what is required, what is most important, and you have to concise it. Uh, so, maybe uh, one or two years of experience would be enough for this webinar. And then I have told uh, Mr. Mihir to organize a series of the webinars on the subject, on this logistics. And not only this the ports and uh, container services, other things, a lot of things are involved in that. So we can have a series of webinars on this subject itself. This is this could be one of the starting point for the logistics part for handling uh, goods in the port, bulk handling. Uh, I also welcome all the participants. A lot of them have joined by now and some will be joining in due course who are attending this webinar on a very important and specialized subject related to logistics. Uh, CIA has got over 500 uh, members as of today. Uh, this includes uh, all types, organizations, individual members, EPC uh, members, affiliated members, and, uh, and the young professionals. Uh, this is a forum uh, what is a CIA Future uh, Leader Forum? Uh, this is headed by Mr. Mihir Singha, and uh, he has been very actively organizing a uh, lot of activities. Uh, this is the sixth seminar webinar uh, being organized by the Youth Forum. Uh, it is all uh, managed by the young professionals. That's a good part of it. Uh, regarding C uh, affiliation of uh, CIA with the FEDIC, uh, this year our member uh, nominee from CIA is governing council member, Mr. Prashant Kapila. He was elected to the board. He will be there for four years and uh, he will be taking up our issues and we will knowing what is happening there on the international forum. Similarly, the SPARCs, uh, FEDIC SPARC, that is Asia Pacific, that uh, committee is headed by our past president, Mr. Sudhir Dhawan, and a lot of activities are being organized by them. Uh, in November, they are organizing a seminar or big meeting international conference in Bangkok. Uh, regarding CIA, see, we, in order to inspire and promote the engineering profession, consultancy profession, uh, we confer national awards uh, in various fields uh, every year. Uh, it is uh, available both to the organizations as well as individuals. Uh, these award details are there on our website, cia at org.in. And uh, the, anyone who's interested, we prefer that some of you will be maybe doing the innovative jobs or some uh, projects which could be uh, nominated for the uh, for the awards. It is open uh, to the CIA members as well as to the outside members. I also request whosoever is uh, interested, they can take the membership for CIA and uh, contribute in the profession. With these words, uh, I'll uh, now uh, pass on uh, to the chairperson of the uh, young forum, future leaders forum, Mr. Singha. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I am going to, to introduce moderator of the session, Mr. Mirajuddin Ansari. He is a civil engineer by qualifications and over the span of more than eight years of experience in the structural design of bridges. He has expertise in a span of wide range of bridges types, including RCC, post tension concrete, and steel composite structures. His work experience for Bangladesh and others 
country also. He completed his graduation in civil engineering degree from NIT Tirchi. He is currently working in ICT Private Limited. Now, I request Mr. Mirajuddin to take over. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, this is my first uh, webinar as a moderator. I'm a little, a little nervous and very much excited to go through it. In continuation with uh, Mr. Arish Sharma, sir, the introduction uh, part, uh, the, to, today we are having Mr. Parambir Kumar Datta, sir. He is a senior consultant and associated with the many uh, organizations uh, in India and uh, to the globe. Uh, uh, out of uh, those, uh, uh, the organization, the, the few names I can read out is are uh, Consulting Engineering Services Private Limited, Indian Port Association, Indian Marine Type University, uh, International Seaport India Private Limited, PM, BFTC, CPCS, Universal Consultant UK, uh, uh, Grant uh, Thoron, Thoronton, etc. He is a he is a uh, mechanical engineer by profession, and uh, he is having a vast experience of uh, fifty four years. Uh, 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 his his experiences include uh, the uh, handling the container handling equipment system, the bulk cargo handling equipment system, operation and maintenance of port equipment and saf safety aspects. Uh, he was also uh, the proof consultant uh, for design review of, for a number of ports project on build, operate, and transfer mode in India and uh, abroad, including the uh, Gangar Varam port. He was a visiting faculty uh, at uh, Indian Marine Time University, Kolkata campus, and I ISWBM. He has a life membership of various professional bodies and institutions. He has worked uh, with the Kolkata Trust uh, uh, of uh, Haldia Dock Complex. He is impelled with UPSC and MSME in expert panel of mechanical engineers. He has delivered lectures on various topics in, in seminar and conferences organized by different institutions and associations. He is a life fellow institution of, uh, uh, of engineers in, in India. Life Member Consulting Engineers Association of India, PNC International uh, Headquarters, Belgium, and Chartered Engineers. Uh, with this uh, introduction of our uh, renowned uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Pravir Datta, sir, I would pass on the floor to sir for uh, his pre presentation and valuable uh, inputs uh, to the set topics we are going to discuss today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before starting, I uh, request only to show my the next slide. My mentor, uh, actually, Mr. Srikumar Ghosh, I think he is known to everybody by now. He expired. But he was my mentor in the consultancy profession. I was in port for 30 years. Then I came out and Okay, fine. Now, one thing I only uh, request uh, everybody to bear with me. Maybe I slip out time for 10-15 minutes because as uh, Mr. Sarma said in the first uh, introduction that I always tell Mihir uh, Singha that you have put me in a tight situation for uh, delivering talks of 55 years experience in 55 minutes. Just I have been allowed 55 minutes. But anyway, my only thing is that till the last day I remain alive, this young future leader, future leader forum, I, I dream of it. In our time, it was not there. But I wish people should bear the flag and continue whatever service is required from my side. It is a difficult situation that I cannot go to Delhi. Otherwise, I am a very comfortable person in a classroom situation, to be very honest. But uh, I have a lot of things to share 
everything is there with me everything is there with me and i request cai and the future leader forum if you can organize such things part wise i can give lot more than what i am giving today because today there is no time actually already i have taken 5 minutes so uh, with the permission of the chair i start miraj can i start now yeah 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 sir please go ahead okay now this is one slide i am showing it has something to do with material handling i come in the main subject just later just i'm sharing my experience this is the first bot project port project rather first bot project birth number 4a haldia in which i was the advisor come proof checker come <laughs> chief engineer whatever you call it for international seaports privately now here if you look at it very minutely you will see that half of the jetty is being constructed and on the other half of the jetty the construction of uh, cranes are going on these are unloader cranes i'll show you the pictures uh, slides uh, separately later on but why i am showing you this is for everybody whether he is a civil engineer or a electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer or a bulk handling professional this is the first time in india i don't know about abroad what happened this is the first time in india that machinery started erection on a incomplete jetty one crane buffer to buffer is about 35 meter the jetty is 265 meter long so we said give us the lnt was the constructor give us the half of it you give us 100 meter or 125 meter so that the machines are ready we can erect and we have done that that was the first time in india and we could save one year time the whole plan of 5 million ton handling capacity has been constructed in only 14 months including construction complete start of the operation so this i wanted to show it because this is a unique thing i have written parallel construction of unloader and jetty at a time half of the jetty we have constructed we started direction there balance half of the jetty it goes unhindered so now i come to the main subject matter now this uh, material handling no don't show it sir now is you can keep it as it is i'll tell the next one i'll tell when required now material handling is a subject every day we do every day we go to market we take something very casually maybe sometimes we throw it up and down but if we purchase a tv or a mobile phone or a music system we don't do like that we care it properly we, we put it in a box we seal it properly then installation then so proper care that is what material handling is now you can have hundred of hundred of books copied from only one book copied from only one book i am telling you the name i have the guts to say that the name of the book is material handling handbook asme and immms edited by r w kulwise he compiled and that is the best book in our time 
means uh, 2000 2001 the price of the book was 35000 plus customs duty so for a, any person it was not possible generally big consulting firms used to in fact i fought c c s to purchase one book mr ghosh was very annoyed with me that is salary kisko dega you were uh, just taking away uh, 35000 plus tax means that time at value and all the tax would have been about 105% so that book is i am telling you very honestly and very bluntly i am telling this book is the best book so long in the market anyone wants to learn material handling they should go by that and there are other books also lot of my friends are writing books i used to help them this one and the sima fifth and sixth edition both you should consider the when there is a sixth edition why should i consider fifth edition no not that fifth edition something very good is there in sixth edition some addition is there along with the other so keep both the books together fortunately i am having both the books one of my friend uh, gifted me these two books from usa chicago he is from uh, soros group piroji is a very good friend of mine now in every book in a course in a engineering college or in iit there are now material handling courses are going on on some books I am sorry to say which are incomplete. Again, I am sorry to say which are incomplete. Recently, I read one book where this pipe conveyor and high angle conveyor is not there. Now, some of my friend here, maybe he is here. He is writing a book. So I first suggested him to don't forget to include pipe conveyor and high angle conveyor. because these two are the order of the day because of pollution control as well as uh, for very difficult terrain lifting of material so those two things i suggest now in in uh, short the material handling is a systematic and scientific method of moving packing and storing of materials in appropriate and suitable location without any damage to the base material this is the best possible uh, definition i could collect from many many books i have read so many books in so many years now what we have to consider we have to consider distance how much it will go if it is a 1 km i took a bag and take some material but if it is 10 km i have to hire a car so distance is a thing then damage reduction like vegetables you bring maybe sometimes your one dozen egg half of the eggs are broken and get a thrash in the house so how to protect those things value and its original condition then reduction of finishing time means i can walk down with some material that is material handling for 10 kilometers does it uh, bear any meaning no it does not bear any meaning if it is urgently required then i will hire a car or a rickshaw or a auto and i will go then flow is controlled the material flow like that mr sharma was telling about logistics that is a very very vital part in the material handling one of the most important component of the material handling is the continuous and control flow of materials why i say continuous continuous means suppose one thermal power station is running 
and uh, you cannot supply coal. So, Badarpur Thermal Power may there is no coal in Badarpur Thermal Power Station. So, half of Delhi is out of electricity, load shedding, this, that. So, that is the thing. It should be controlled and continuous flow. Then safe and hazard-free environment where people will work that should be considerably safe area. Uh, when I will talk to safety, I will come to that. Then utilization of time and methodology. Facility layout. Now, the picture, uh, the slide you are seeing here is a facility, it's a three-dimensional picture, how a port looks like. A vessel is standing, then some loading or unloading equipments are there, then maybe conveyor is there or loaded or unloaded on the trucks, then it goes to the go-down, then liquid goes to the uh, your uh, tanks, you can see. Uh, kindly, kindly give the earlier, uh, earlier uh, plan of that. No, not that. After that, move. No, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no, no. There is a layout. Layout of a port is there. One port layout is there. Sir, I do. I, I, I don't see. Uh, this is the. This is the first slide. Second. Okay. Uh -huh. Third is this. Okay. Okay. Forget. I. I. Okay. Uh, how I put it now. Simplification of work process. Simplify the work as much as possible. There are a lot of machines, lot of uh, equipment, accessories you can uh, see in the market, but select the easiest one to simplify the work process and methodology. Then production activity. You have to decide on the capacity. You have to decide on the type of equipment which can efficiently handle the material and reduces the total cost of production. Now, the amusing part of it, this total material handling, it does not add to the value of the material, but add to the cost of the finished good. You move a material from Delhi to Bombay, but the raw material value is not added by material handling. When something, some from iron or steel, you fabricate something, then the finished good, your this transportation or logistics, whatever you say will add to this cost. Now, normally what we know that generally there are four types of transportation we see. This transportation by sea, transportation by rail, transportation by air and transportation by road. As per the economics of transportation as calculated, if a longer distance is to be covered from Germany to India, as example, transportation by sea probably comes to be the cheapest mode of transportation. For transportation by sea, because now from material handling, slowly I am moving into the port sector because uh, with all uh, respect, due respect to everybody. Material handling is done in steel plant. Material handling like coal, iron ore, all these things are normally handled in bulk. 
so these are handle in steel plant these are handle in uh, thermal power station but what is absent here is the water front whatever you do it is confined into your yard or from the wagon unloading station to the stock and either to the steel plant or to the thermal power station boiler so here one major portion is absent for the professionals who only the do the designing or consulting or operating or maintaining the portion except the water front which is the most critical i can tell you because uh, obviously i am with the port for last 55 years 54 years plus because as i have seen my good friends and my juniors even my seniors those who pass their life throughout their life in coal and link in coal and link plant in a thermal power station or a steel melting shop when they come as a consultant to the port industry and when the waterfront comes this waterfront is the critical and to be very honestly saying they are not properly equipped to advise not properly lot of uh, arguments unnecessary heated arguments debates useless debates i have seen and still today i am facing that kind of thing because still i am in the industry so don't mix up that i am a designer of material handling system but from a steel plant you cannot design a port material handling system because with all these backup system from tipler or the wagon loader or the stockyard or the stacker reclaimer or uh, crusher machinery everything is there but the ship loader and unloader is absent because they don't have to handle vessels normally in a thermal power station or in a steel plant from wagon it is taken of course i subject to correction i tell only one uh, uh, word that in last 10 12 years lot of things have changed now even steel plants or thermal power station they are having their own captive jetty where from the vessels are unloaded because they found it cheaper because that is a one one handling is less well port separately handles and send your material here you can adjust your stock here properly why why the water front is difficult because you know the vessel when comes it comes loaded and it is you cannot see the total uh, body of the vessel only you can see the deck it is very near to the water line then as you unload material it goes up goes up goes up here is the catch where you have to select proper machine which can handle such vessels for small vessels there are prescription for big vessels like i very quickly give you uh, there are vessels because since these are vessels supra max handy max ultra max panamax kamsar max post panamax cape size afra max suage max and vlcc now the lowest one is 48 to 60000 dwt and it is 199 meter 12.2 meter draft and 30 meter wide these are the normal bulk carrying vessels so if anybody wants he can search in google get it or if they come to me i have the mail id you can ask me i can send you all these details these are available with me 
Now, as wagons are used in the rail route, air freight are in air routes, and road trucks are used in road routes, seagoing vessels, bulk carriers, crafts, tankers are used for transportation of different types of categories and cargoes in sea routes. As stated earlier, the transportation by sea route is the cheapest than any other mode of transportation because of the fact that huge quantity of cargo can be carried in a single trip compared to any other mode of transportation. Like I give you example of railway, one rake is consisting of about 60 wagons with say average 60, 60 ton load. So a full rake size of 60 wagons can carry only 3600 to 4000 metric ton of material, whereas one cape size vessel can carry 110000 uh, parcel load so so you can you can see the change the difference in the carrying capacity of different component of this bulk handling in a rail system you have a railway station you have track terminals you have airports and similarly, the terminal points are the ports for ocean going vessels or the river based port where there is a river based port like Calcutta uh, vessels in the river. Because loading and unloading will have to be done in a systematic way in a terminal place from where that will be distributed all over the places where a consigner is there. Now, not going into other points, I now come to bulk cargo. Kindly, kindly show me the earlier, the conventional uh, slide. Huh. Now, what are the types of cargoes? Please keep it here. I'll tell them. Now, basically, if we go for bulk cargo, there are liquid bulk and dry bulk. What are liquid bulk? Liquid bulk is chemical, oil, crude, finished product, lubricants, acids, even phosphoric acids are also. So they are what you need. You need pumping installation, you need unloading arms, you need pipelines, flexible and fixed both. You need mooring hooks, automatic or manual. Now, of course, every, every mooring hook is automatic. You need firefighting facility. You need control instrumentation and monitoring system. You need very good communication facility, tank wagon, locomotives for dispatch. And in a dry bulk, you know dry bulk, everything comes previously PL480. I think uh, in our age, we have seen the wheat used to come from America under the agreement PL480. You can see in the old history of ports or old history of cargo handling, you can see all this. Now, this is what the slide you are seeing. It is the written here conventional type of handling. Right from my forefathers' time, this was the way people used to handle the dry bulk cargo. Now conventional, you can go by manual head load and transportation by truck and or railway wagons. 
hook and net sling you can see hook and net sling i have written everything is very clearly written here hook and net sling and carpet loading handling of ship crane and transportation by truck and a railway wagon in order outward both then hook sling loading unloading by ship crane and the second picture is flat bottom bucket these you may not see in big ports or modern ports but this is also these are also was very helpful in developing all modern ports because of their conventional handling methods and something goes out of order so this type of thing will save you from the demerage of the vessels uh then hook sling loading unloading by ship crane flat bottom bucket the transportation by truck and railway wagons then hook sling bottom open bucket the extreme one you see there is a rope tied in the bottom it flat opens that rope is open that that is called bottom open bucket handling by ship crane transportation by truck and or railway wagon then uh, go to the next slide then ship crane with a grab attachment and discharge hopper and transportation by truck you see this is the grab on the top it is dropping the material this is the mobile hopper or a stationary hopper and the truck is below the hopper now semi mechanical is also similar but if you see the last one that will be better uh, this thing ship crane with grab attachment discharge hopper on portable or fixed conveyor on the jetty that is we call it semi mechanical type of handling removable to stack yard by portable or fixed conveyor system and thereafter final transportation by truck or railway wagon then mechanized system is please go to the next one sir now this is one this one is liquid bulk this is a oil jetty you can similar way this is called the long way is called the trestle and uh, bathing face is on the front of that and depending upon the size of the vessel and the sticks you see one two three four five sticks those are the unloading arms because that is a pipeline the vessel pipeline is attached to this and pumping station it takes away go to the next one sir now here you can see i think it is known to everybody who does the bulk material handling design consultancy or operation maintenance this is a tipler wagon unloading station this is a purely mechanical the wagons are placed by either charger beetle and marshal beetle or by wagon hauler or there are other pusher wagon pusher so one one wagon comes it goes <coughs> in a rotary <coughs> sorry <coughs> or a rotor side tipler and the material is put in the hopper and the hopper goes to material goes to the through conveyor line it goes to either to yard or to vessel or to the railway loading station again for some other transportation now how the vessel sizes changes let me give a very brief description on that in last three decades i must say the volume of dry bulk cargo traffic has increased worldwide to a remarkable extent this becomes clear when one considers the <coughs> increase in production figure for steel aluminium fertilizer and all forms of energy from the basic fuel 
the economical exploitation of overseas and coastal raw materials was made possible only by a far reaching rationalized means of transportation towards the end of the 50s ship builder suggested a bulk transport ship with a cargo carrying capacity of about 60000 dead weight ton it will be slightly lower about say if the dwt called the dead weight ton if it is 60000 then your cargo carrying will be say minus 10000 rough as a thumb rule so it can carry 50 52000 metric ton of materials and this formed the basis for the ports planning by the end of the 60s new sites for harbor with larger depths were being sought in order to Take ships of cargo carrying capacity in excess of one lakh DWT, uh, maybe up to two lakh fifty thousand DWT. I tell you now that I told you certain name of the vessels that you can search in the Google and you will get all details of vessels. Now in Ganga Valley port. in one book it is wrongly written that krishna patnam is the deepest port with 18.75 meter draft but in gangavaram port the normal draft is 19 meter plus 2 meter of tidal variation it gives a draft top 21 meter which is the deepest port in india incidentally i was associated in designing that material handling system so that is the thing now why we need all this you need in the mine only stacking reclaiming and pitted stockpile and loading to railway wagon then in port of dispatch along with all this you need sea going vessels and the loaders or unloaders uh, loaders for port of dispatch and port of destination there the material will be unloaded and you need along with all this uh, tipler then conveyor crusher stacker reclaimer stacker reclaimer tripper car transfer tower kilometers of kilometers of conveyor then you go to the jetty conveyor and there you have one or two or three or four loading equipments for the port of dispatch along with this there is one uh, another uh, type of handling which is called a slurry handling which people those who were in new mangalore port there was a bath of they called it kudremukh bath kudremukh bath means from kudremukh iron ore mines it is made slurry there at the pit head then it is pumped in the pipeline just uh, steel pipeline and the whole pipeline comes up to the new mangalore port and there that slurry is taken out the water is again it is separated water and the iron ore then small grids are prepared and loaded onto the vessel that is one but that is not very popular nowadays those own instances and in fact that new mangalore bath is also converted to coal if i am not wrong subject to correction so the vessel size is changing then what we are doing we are sitting tight not doing anything then why gangavaram port why krishna patnam port why dhamra port why so many big ports jnp why such big ports are coming up 
because the requirement the more the material you bring it is becomes the cheaper in the bulk even in the container the more number of units you bring it whether it's a cubic meter whether it's metric ton or whether it's a box tu 20 ft equivalent we normally call it so the more number so now when we started our career as a port engineer we were having three rows of containers just i'm diverting just to give you the example now it is a sixth or seventh generation has come where 21 rows across the beam or width of the vessel 21 rows are uh, being stacked with five high six high and according to the length of the vessel and size of the container that is decided so now now i am totally in the port now i must say something about because nowadays what is happening if one consultancy firm now i am talking as a consultant if you if you want to go to a steel plant now jsw is having their bar now sr steel is having their captive bar gm boxy of course they don't have anything but they are handling on behalf of somebody but now everybody after this beauty project this port beauty project every bulk consuming bulk material consuming organization they started having their own captive bark they take a place some water front 300 meter a very standard length of a jetty 250 300 meter jetty and directly by conveyor they take the material direct to their steel plant even if it is 10 kilometers away from their uh, unloading vessel unloading station now i am giving you just for information i am giving you one uh, item that the longest conveyor so far we could uh, search out is a 98 kilometer conveyor belt which is used in the sahara desert for mining and transportation of rock phosphate another one you might have seen our 37 km our lnt has done that that lafat cement surma mines from meghalaya to bangladesh that limestone used to go with that that is in india in india that is the longest belt 37.5 km so these are the things the now if you get an order for a consultancy for a steel plant or even a thermal power station i can assure you that you will find one captive jetty along with that with a mechanical handling system connecting to the steel plant or the thermal power plant what you do you don't know port so you will say i will do this part only i will not do that part then who will do that part who will coordinate so now that is the thing here this young future leaders your forum has to take responsibility of i i will tell something about now consultancy i am a mechanical engineer but incidentally i have a sandwich degree of electrical also but i don't practice electrical but i know electrical now if you are put as a resident engineer in fact the day before or the uh, one week back i was talking to your chairman meet singha i said you are posted as a person to somewhere as resident engineer or the chief project manager their jt is there unloading system is there and it is connected the whole system is connected to a thermal power station 
or uh, a steel plant what do you do so my humble submission is now in our time we did not have so much of senior people i can tell you i am open to everybody i am 76 years i don't know whether i live for 5 or 10 years but my request is please don't be ashamed to ask me questions i may not know everything but i know something in last 55 years and as a consultant i am working for more than 25 years i left my job and i started consultancy so as a consultant for consultant or as a senior manager or a chief general manager or director or whatever it is if you people have to have minimum basic knowledge of every engineering every engineering you say that i don't know how to fabricate a tube no then you are not fit for a project manager in a captive jet port so these are the very very vital things we have to study in our time i told earlier i was telling mr sharma that the best book in the material handling cost in my time around 2000 when i started consultancy 35000 rupees plus 100 percent that means the book cost about 65 to 70000 rupees even many big houses uh, do not have this book but fortunately i could pursue the managing director to purchase one and with a lot of abuses the book was purchased and it took 6 months to book to arrive in india by import but now knowledge base is available at least we who are doing the job still at the age of 76 we have some knowledge brain is functioning so i am working otherwise if i make fault after fault no consultant will call me and if i go there they give me some job they will just kick me out of the so what you people have to do is to equip yourself i don't want that you have to pass electrical engineering or you have to pass a mechanical engineering degree no you be a civil engineer do it but learn side by side and that sima book was costing in 2000 the red book of sima fifth edition that was costing 25000 rupees of course including everything so now you are getting this knowledge but my only humble submission to the cei consulting engineer association since we have taken so much of pain to organize this kind of webinar and now that digital thing has come i could have given another 50 slides in fact to the chairman i have sent my slides maybe 200 slides i have sent to him actual locational slides. so if those type of case study can be done it will be better now to go for a this kind of i now i come to this captive jt planning or a three bar jt planning which belongs to sr or say adani thermal or jindal steel there may be three four birds and those things are happening now in paradeep in tuti korin everywhere these things are happening with captive jt now what you need you need a adequate size of entrance channel turning basin approach channel navigable draft that is how much your vessel can carry the more the draft the more the material if the draft is half meter less maybe for a super cape size vessel you may lose 65000 ton of material you cannot carry that so this is one thing the handling bar should be sufficiently longer to accommodate large vessel and to negotiate all the hatches now what are the hatches or hold we call it 
their pockets are there like void room is made and we put the material or we take out the material from that now the normal uh, vessel sizes are we five hatch seven hatch and nine hatch except very small vessels i am not talking them normal vessels what we are handling between 60000 to 250000 it is five seven and nine in fact this vlcc is having uh, nine hatches and super capsize those i uh, ha few vessels very costly now what do you need why i told sufficiently longer because of the reason that today you are producing steel and you have a captive jetty to save the initial investment you make a 300 meter jetty it is very standard length a 300 meter jetty but if a vessel of 325 meter length comes what do you do mooring dolphin these you cannot access all the hatches seven hatch or nine hatch with big vessels you cannot tackle so what do you do so keep some space if you need a 300 meter bar convince the client to make it 350 the next time you don't know because what i mean to say from my consultancy experience i mean to say that in every equipment or every item of your installation should have some capacity tackling equation you can handle a big a vessel of just a 50 meter excess length you cannot handle that vessel otherwise you could have saved one third of your cost on the bulk handling material on the coal or iron ore or something or bauxite or alumina whatever you bring it so this is the thing keep some spare capacity that's what i mean to say keep while you design keep some spare capacity in your installation so that you don't have to go hand to mouth now you must have storage space of adequate capacity to prevent possible interruption in shipping for dispatch or receipt now anchored has a book again i tell you you search in anchored port manual that is available in google uh, search you can see it every container uh, bath design bulk bath design what will be the efficiency what will be the your uh, stay of the material all these are there so you can read that in this short time i will not be able to explain so much but uh, if you don't have that capacity or in other way you may lose your steel production if your stockyard is empty now another is suitable equipment for unloading or loading the rolling stocks because normally it is going by rolling stock in some places they use trucks tip tipper trucks but rolling stock is the generally nowadays uh, one and a half hour for one rake that has come this uh, that is called rapid loading system i'll show you the slide later on then stacking and reclaiming equipment of suitable capacity to match the rates of unloading and loading again i'll say if your present requirement is 1500 tons per hour capacity kindly have some margin over that kindly have some margin over that 
then suitable mechanized conveyor system to transport the cargo from ship rolling stock to stockpile and stockpile to ship rolling stock the layout should be simple and streamlined this is one of the this is a very very simple line i am telling you this line even a class 3 class 4 boy can translate into his own mother tongue the layout should be simple and streamlined but this is the toughest task in a bulk handling situation this is the toughest task the layout should be simple and streamlined the selected equipment should be constructed with indigenous component kindly make it a point import bahut sasta hai import is very cheap take and after uh, guarantee period is over then there is nobody to give you so selected equipment should be constructed with indigenous component as much as possible with service and spare parts availability locally and should be of sturdy and simple construction for travel free maintenance the design should consider the local atmospheric and operating condition because of uh, simple uh, i tell you uh, because of simple uh, is corrosion is a you will i have a article in view point if you can find out maybe in june 2018 it was published yearly in india 150000 crores approximately is lost due to corrosion and bad maintenance no painting good bad painting of the equipment most of the people recently i was uh, in a blog i was uh, uh reading a blog i also gave something that gentleman uh, very nicely told that we are taking always 20% 25% extra what i am telling spare capacity that is something but what he is telling that you are making a equipment with 20% design additional design why it is not 1 is to 1.2 no why not 1 1 is to 1.1 why not 10% why not 1 is to 1.05 but in that case what you have to do you have to maintain no maintenance is very very important function which normally i don't say most of the organization i don't say i say all the organization neglect the maintenance function only they count how much is loaded or unloaded from the vessel or how many number of wagons have been dispatched from the, the installation and how much cargo has been no you see this is a thing uh, very important because you don't know in next 5 years what is going to change people are going to chandrayaan in moon chandrayaan 3 to the sun in aditya l1 what we are doing why can't we maintain our plants the maintenance is a very very important function which people should do very ritually religiously and ritually like you go to a temple uh now uh, go to the next slide now this is one this is a bio br and wagon it is that uh, go to the next you see how it works this 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 two doors open and coal or iron or whatever this is a for uh, bulk uh, transportation this is a very very important uh, item normal wagon i have not given that in the wagon tipler uh, picture you have seen there is a box and wagon they call it box and wagon and these what here upon there the whole wagon you have to take up and turn turtle but here you just 
move on the line the hopper mouth is open line is open you just operate a brake from the steam engine and the whole wagon is empty with uh, say 10 12 minutes whereas a 60 wagon normally it will take minimum 3 to 4 hours to unload a 60 wagon rig but here previously first it started with a four wagon uh, BOBRN that was four wagon a hopper can carry then it increased to eight then it increased to 12 now 16 to 20 wagon when a half a rig you can immediately unload it goes it goes uh, out of the hopper mouth railway track is fitted on the hopper top and the next 20 wagons just open the, the whole thing by gravity it goes please go to the next one sorry to interrupt you sir sir we have huh? already five minutes no i i am finishing it just showing this showing this you are already late i know I will just show the slides and finish up. More or less, my deliberation is over, more or less. Okay, now, this is a stacker machine. This machine stacks in the yard. You can see these are actual pictures from the side. Next slide. I'll go quickly. This is a double roll crusher. People can ask me, why you ask for a double roll crusher in your port? Because the coal mines do not keep to their commitment and they send all kind of uh, material including overburden so i cannot stop my plant so i have to utilize this one a double load cutter this is the costliest uh, maker is mmd uk next slide this one is a mobile crusher if you don't have that big installation or something like that on the jetty you can on the crawler chain this moves lightweight and you can crush your material to size the material and do this next this is a stacker come reclaimer you see bucket wheel is there on the nose on the top of that and uh, the boom there is conveyor either it stack or it reclaim and that's a reversible conveyor on the boom. Next. Now this is a conveyor. Deliberately I have taken this picture because you see again in our time, not in our time, in your time also, if a conveyor has to go this way, you would have three to four transfer towers. But now open conveyor can be guided by almost 90 degree deviation from its position. So it's a deliberate, it's a, uh, from Egypt, I have taken this photograph. Uh, so without, without any transfer tower, or maybe out of 10, you can delete it and keep two, and use this kind of conveyor. So, this is one thing. Next. Now, this is a portable conveyor. You can use for local lorry loading or lorry unloading. You can do it. I have just given a portable conveyor. Next. Now, this is a ship loader. This is the latest uh, type of ship loader uh, here the, on the boom conveyor is there and the green one that is a uh, anti-pollution device we call it but it's a uh, very high grade of nylon cloth bellow type of thing normally it is it is in collapse condition but while you load dusty material you put it there during loading you do it next now this one is a barge loader you can ask me why you are given a barge loader because in a big vessel like a cape size or a super cape size or a panamax size you can load even up to 30 40 000 tons per hour so that machine 
the bigger the machine the more the loading system and this thing but in bar you cannot load more than 5 to 600 tons per hour or unload so it's a very simple machine it's a helix type of you see in the spout that the helix spout and the material from the top it falls on that and it is loaded it's a maximum 1000 1200 tons per hour it handles very comfortably next this is a grab unloader it is normally if you see in most of the international ports also about 55% of the unloading system consist of a bar a grab bar unloader a grab unloader no sorry bar is a grab unloader because of its simplicity and because people are very much familiar with it uh, and very simple system again miraj is pushing me hard chalo next this one is a uh, continuous unloader but grab what you get grab you can have the size there is no size restriction whatever mix up size from minus 50 to plus 250 plus 350 you can handle but here in the unloading system and with this pipe shoot your size is restricted if you get a size material material is sized properly if it is 250 minus 250 mm so if it is 260 mm the material will struck in the uh, pipe and then the whole machine will damage so it is not popular even in the whole of world uh, there are such machines here and there abroad but in india 95% unloading system are with grab bar unloader a uh, grab unloader next go to the neha this one is a very very interesting machine i tell you why again for civil engineers also or a project director whoever it is the jt is in a arc and the boom of the it moves in in an arc what do you gain from here if you don't have to go for a block wall you don't have to go for a retaining wall type you don't diaphragm type you don't have to go for a cast in situ you just do it on the raker pipes you see it is actual photograph it's a raker pipe and you just do that but these are very specific where very high cargo i i tell you the capacity of this machine is 28000 tons per hour in a australian iron mine captive jt there it is there so this kind of machine your civil cost is compared to the machine and the system it is nil i can tell you it is nil i don't say nil nothing everything has a cost slide only just to show you acha this one is a screw unloader again this is a continuous unloader of different type there are some bucket and wheel type was they are the first one but here if you see in the red portion there is screw is there the cross section is given so again size restriction you can unload fertilizer you can unload rock phosphate you can unload sugar you can unload rice you can unload cooking coal you can unload Minus twenty, minus thirty mm size, but beyond that, again the whole pipe gets jammed. And to replace one screw or a covering pipe, the machine will not function. But capacity-wise, the continuous unloader, if you design it for two thousand dph, it will give you two thousand dph. The efficiency is hundred percent for these machines. Next. This is the rapid wagon loader. What I was telling you, the wagon passes through and the conveyor from the top uh, dump the material in two shoots. They weigh it and put the 
machine and uh, in one and a half hour a 60 wagon uh, rake can be uh, loaded one and a half to two hours maximum it should not take more than that next one sir this is that uh, this is uh, the diagrammatic sketch of that how it is coming first big one then second one way way in then wagon is loaded Next. Now, this is one very unique machine. It, I could have told you earlier, this is a bag loader because you got lot of bag material, like a cement you get in bags, like sugar you get in bag, like many other uh, rice, millets, grams, everything you get in bag. So, this machine can load 36,000 bags per hour. This machine is in Ireland only. Nowhere in the world I have seen this. Of course, nowadays, if they have, maybe only 10 machines uh, could have been manufactured. Next. This is the same thing. How? The, there is a spout. You see the bottom, the, how the same thing. Actually, it rotates. There is a turntable below that hopper there is a helix chute and a turntable below it if, if you see the other side you see it, it has radially stacked the whole material and 36,000 bags per hour of say 50 kg capacity remove next no but one thing okay I I did not give, I think the last, uh, I'll talk to you later. Last one I have given, one FSRU, I am showing you, if you can uh, see to it, let me just one minute. Anyway, FSRU, you write in the Google and search it. That is, the LNG is taken nowadays. That is very popular because of uh, these young engineers uh, pressing an old uh, man. I say man. Young leaders are uh, pushing me very hard that I have to finish up. So I, whatever not, FSRU. That is called floating storage and regasification unit, which is used for transportation of LNG, liquid natural gas. That is very popular. That is very popular nowadays. And thank you, I have given you, but I want to show you something. I want to add, since uh, most of the people will be... Uh, One minute. Ha, ah, FSRU is here. How an FSRU operates? It is there. This one, the last one. No, we are not able to see. You have to share the screen. And uh, uh, the, the CIE has to allow. Yeah, this uh, PPT band karna padega. Okay, sir. One thing I show you, if you can see my this thing, Yes, now is visible. Now is visible. Now everybody can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I just want to tell my young friends that what is called a proof checking. This is a drawing on design of a stacker mm -hmm. come reclaimer of Gangavaram port. Mm -hmm. I have given 35 points on it, and this is the proof checking if you are sincere and serious. Anyway, thank you very much. If you have question, if you have anything, <laughs> I don't know. Tell me. Uh, Mr. Ansar, you can take up the question. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, such a long and uh, uh, explanatory presentation. We had a lot of things to learn and uh, uh, come to know a uh, lot of new things about the jetties and the related topics. I would uh, request uh, Mr. R. S. Sarma sir to have some closing remarks on it. 
who will give myself uh, we had a very nice presentation and very detailed one from mr datta uh, as uh, we told in the beginning itself uh, the material was too much with him but because of shortage of time only limited portion could be covered but whatever uh, time he got he has explained the details about the bulk handling it is a lot of things you know the, the different type of the machines different type of the loaders different type of the unloaders uh, for handling liquid solid and the crushing also you see everything uh, he has covered in a short uh, uh, maybe about 15 minutes or so 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 i thank uh, uh, datta ji and uh, Uh, we'll be discussing with you uh, maybe some more sessions on on the connected uh, aspects of uh, the logistics as i told in the beginning right sir my service i told you till the last day i am alive with Thank my you. brain you are, i am with cii you are live member of cia so i am live, live member so i i cannot yes, yes, i cannot yes. fly i am a live member yes yes i joined we pray for you on long life the uh, benefit of your membership not only that and your commitment also to the profession uh i thank you all the participants for sparing their time hope no you can you can sir i can only say you can share the ppt with everybody if they want i think i think we last cia uh, we have got the numbers and uh, yes. ppt can be shared so whatever was missed uh, yes. in the presentations so that will be available and uh, if you got any questions any time uh those can be sent uh, to cia we'll uh, get it uh, get the answers uh, feedback from the tai i think with this uh, i like to close uh, the session thank you very much thank you sir thank you, you for sir. giving thank me you. opportunity thank to serve uh, the young uh, people uh, thanks to the chairperson for organizing seminars he is a very vibrant magnificent uh, magnificent job done by uh, the moderator ansari yeah <laughs> yeah for everybody everybody yeah, yeah, sir yeah. there is one question that is being asked uh, from the uh, participant tell me that tell what me. are the safety to be considered for port handling equipments uh, can you enlighten us about this safety that is i i can tell you i can if i start again another hour but you go through three books Yeah. International level, ILO guideline, OSHA guideline, and Indian Dock Labor Regulation Act. Everything is clearly written there. What you have to do, what you don't have to do. The, 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 ILO the, guideline, OSHA guideline, and Indian Dock Safety Regulation. Okay. These three books are the masterpieces. They are very good. They are cheap also. They are not very costly. Yeah. may so you keep a note of the books what is telling and yeah. then uh, through the uh, whatsapp group or whatever is there uh, you circulate to all the participants so this yeah. question has been asked this question about the books can you share the authors of the books this is also question so you can keep a note uh, then send to all the all the participants not all no if if you have not noted send me the uh, send me the uh, books they want the names i'll give the books i'll give the name of the books okay send so me one mail repeat the names of the book and the author's name you can do it now fine fine no sir that thing can you repeat huh? the name of the books and authors that is the last thing we we should be doing before closing the this session Uh, people see i am a 76 year old person i i i am not saying that i will not give i i want to give another 2 hours i have no problem nobody will disturb me here thing is that i if i can search google why my younger generation cannot search google yeah we can that's a very one thing one thing i can tell you now miraj i tell you normally i am a very low profile person 
I don't uh, go by uh, advertisement or something. I'm very low profile. Normally, people might have heard my name, but hardly most of the people have not seen me. But I am giving you one website where I have uploaded all my 54 years of experience and other books, history book, geography book, engineering book, drawing, everything is available. You can write down. Okay. I can show you this website. Now my follower is uh, 13 lakh, uh, 39,000, I think. Okay. So you my, tell the website. I, I'm showing it. I'm showing it. Just uh, two minutes. Academia.edu. A C A D E M I A dot edu. You register there and search for my Probir Doctor with D A T T A and be my follower. Whatever I upload, everybody will get that. Okay, sir. There are a few other questions. We will uh, reply in through the mail and we'll consult you for the uh, answers if we, it is required uh, and with this sir we would like to conclude our session because we are already getting late and uh, if it is possible we would like to uh, consult you once again for one more session as you are yeah. from starting you are saying that it is very difficult for me to confine my 54 years of experience in just very, very, very difficult so, we will we will try to connect with you uh, for one more, more please session. be in touch please be in touch i am always available uh, my brain is working all right i have no sugar no diabetes no blood pressure no cardiac <laughs> problem <laughs> okay, only sir. thing only thing i have restricted my traveling with my friend's advice that your uh, pelvis may get damaged for long distance I normally, even I go, I go to the main city like Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, where aeroplane goes. Okay, that's Only cool. air travel I do. Only yeah. air travel I do. Uh, otherwise, in Calcutta, of course, if you want to do something in Calcutta with Saurabh Daspatana, I have no problem. I can go there. Because I tell you, in webinar, one hour, Two hour, three hour, nobody will sit and hear, listen. But in a classroom, and I am last from 80 onwards, I am taking classes. So I am very comfortable and a lot of slide and PowerPoint presentation. You can check with, uh, I have given two my projects with maybe 87, uh, 90 uh, slides to me. Yeah. Okay, or the, hmm. uh, you send me your phone number, you have my phone number, that is my WhatsApp number, whatever you want, you send me through WhatsApp, yeah. I'll immediately send you. Oh, okay, okay, okay sir. Okay. That's, uh, thank you, sir. Good gesture, sir. Uh, thank you so much for enlightening thank us. And, uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity yeah, to serve the young people. And, uh,